Um, I went to God in prayer, as I always do. And I said, God, I said, this is just not right. I said, um, you know, you call me to preach. And God, maybe you're calling me again to do what I've done all my life, almost, and that's to preach. And if you are, you just let me know when, if I'm to start a church, uh, a church with a special outreach into the gay and lesbian community, but with its doors open to everybody. And uh, that still small voice in the mind's ear, let me know now. And with that, I knew how I had to start this church. Well, I thought, how wonderful. This is correct. This is true. I mean, uh, uh, this is godlike. <laughs> what I mean, uh, religion isn't supposed to be some fenced off thing and, and, uh, and exclusive rather than inclusive. It was amazing as I started looking, okay, God, you've called me. You said it's okay to start a church. Uh, where do I start it at? And I started looking around and I said, well, you know, you've, you've preached in houses before, so you can start in your living room. That'll save money. You don't have any money, nothing to rent anything. So why don't you just do that? So here's a scrappy, you know, fighter saying, I'm going to make a gay church and he's an ordained minister. You know, that's great. I mean, that had enormous political consequences. But I'm sure there were a lot, even a lot of gay people who have maybe had been leading a life of quiet Episcopalians or something, thought, hmm, no, this isn't, you know, why, why do we need a gay church? Many gay people really did believe, both men and women, that um, there was just no way God could love you. And when they, many of those heard when I first started Metropolitan Community Church, they laughed. And they said, oh, this is a queen playing church, you know what I mean, this can't really be church. I said, I want to take out an ad in the Advocate. And they laughed at me. And they said, there's, oh, no, no. They said, there's a lot of charlatans in the gay and lesbian community. Why should we sell you an ad? And immediately I said, well, I'll tell you why. And I testified. So they sold me the ad. So uh, here it was three weeks before I started. The ad appeared in the Advocate. Here Reverend Troy Perry gave my Huntington Park address. October the 6th, 1968. The first service of Metropolitan Community Church was held in the house behind me. Saturday night, before that, uh, I was walking the floors upstairs, making sure that my sermon was ready. I had prepared it, really prayed over it, and I was going to preach on Be True to You, my first sermon to members of the gay and lesbian community. And uh, my scripture was from the book of Job, Though God slay me, yet I'll trust God. And I wanted to make sure that people understood that I knew God loved me and God loved them too. Personally, myself, I thought, well, it's not going to have a, too many people showing up for services, to be honest with you. People who were gay, they didn't go to church. I got up that morning, had to do everything. I did all the prayers, the announcements, preaching, the communion service, and uh, Willie did the music for me. We had tape recorded the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And so we sounded like there were just a thousand people in church that morning. I was nervous. I've never been more nervous in my life. All at once here I was nervous, something I'd never ever been. I didn't know if anybody would come. I kept browbeating friends, trying to get people to come, but I really didn't know if anybody would show up. There were nine friends and three strangers that first service. There was a woman, a person of color, a Jew, I looked at it as just the view of things to come from Metropolitan Community Church. And then Troy came out with his trademark, if you love the Lord this morning, say amen. It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning and to feel his power and his spirit. He's a good preacher. He knows how to preach. He knows how to talk. And he knows how to, you know, get people's attention. And when I preached that morning, they were so receptive of my sermon. But it was what happened next when the Holy Spirit moved. And what happened next was I dedicated communion, asked people to come forward. Only three people did, but we all were in tears. We were all crying. There was a move of the Holy Spirit so strong you could have cut it with a knife. We knew something incredible had happened that day. 